It's Monday, December 15th, and here's some of the news beyond the headlines. Turkish authorities have escalated a crackdown on supporters of a U.S.-based rival of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. On Sunday, police raided the Samayalu TV station and offices of the best-selling Zaman newspaper. Both media outlets are linked to Muslim cleric Fethullah Gulen, a former Erdogan ally who has long criticized his consolidation of power. Two dozen people arrested in Istanbul and other areas include journalists and police officers, who are accused of forming an illegal organization to seize control of the government. Gulen fled Turkey more than 25 years ago after being charged with trying to overthrow the country's then-secular government. President Erdogan has accused the cleric's followers of orchestrating a corruption scandal that implicated him, his associates, and family. Sudan's president is celebrating a decision by the International Criminal Court to suspend an investigation into alleged war crimes in Darfur. Prosecutor Fatou Bensouda cited a need to shift resources to other urgent crises in the region because the UN Security Council had done little or nothing in more than a decade to bring President Omar al-Bashir and others to justice. The ICC indicted Bashir in 2009, but he remains at large and doesn't recognize the court's authority. More than 300,000 people have died and millions have been displaced from Darfur since 2003, when the government set out to crush an insurgency in the area. Syrian activists have expressed their support for growing protests against police brutality in the United States. Residents of the northwestern town of Kafranbel often demonstrate against the Syrian government. On Saturday, their chants and banners also addressed America's race field debates over the deaths of Michael Brown, Eric Garner, and others at the hands of police. Halfway across the globe, tens of thousands of people gathered in New York, Washington, Boston and other cities to protest against grand jury decisions not to indict the police officers involved in Brown and Garner's deaths. Drone manufacturers are trying to give the fruits of their labor a better name. The first ever commercial drone expo was held in Los Angeles on Saturday. Companies promoted drone uses that go beyond current military applications, delivering medicine to remote locations and searching for missing children, among others. The event attracted thousands of people, but legal experts say the safety and privacy concerns that surround drones make it harder to justify their expanded use. Check out the Vice News YouTube channel for more original reporting and documentaries from around the world. I met with the president of Honduras uh, in Honduras and his entire cabinet and the president of Guatemala. They all say the same thing. If you guys didn't have the demand, we wouldn't have the supply. We're not consuming this stuff.